Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Rono from Mount Mountains and today I'm going to talk to you about scenes. How you can link scenes together, how you can, how you can load a new scene, how you can um, do stuff before uh, scene selection. For example, you can have character selection, level selection, uh, progress management and today we're going to see how all that works in the Corgi Engine. So, um, to start things off, let's have a look at how to load a scene. Okay, I'm in scene A, I want to go to scene B because maybe I've reached the end of the level. Um, how to do that in the Corgi engine. So right now I'm in the minimal uh, level, which as you can see is pretty simple. Um, one way I can add a gate to another level is by going into prefabs, props here, and gate to next level looks like it's stored over a door. I place it in my scene. I can, from its inspector, I can define a bunch of stuff, like for example, how uh, to activate it. Maybe I need to press a button or something, but I don't even want that. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I can decide that it's auto activated and maybe I don't even want to display a prompt. The important part, of course, is the level name here. So right now, if I go through that door, it's going to take me to level selection, but maybe I'd, write, I'd rather go to a different scene. So uh, maybe I want to go to features gravity. So I just select that. I need to type the name exactly how it's um, named, uh, how, the, how the scene is named, and then I press play. And if I move to the door, you can see that lo the loading scene uh, takes place and then I'm in my new scene. And that's really as simple as that. All that is done thanks to uh, a class called um, loading scene manager that you can uh, you can see here. So that's the finish level class and as you can see it's very straightforward. Uh, it has some stuff to handle the, the button press, but really uh, to go to next level, it either calls uh, level manager, which has a go to level method and does a bunch of stuff like fading in and out and so on. And also you can simply call loading scene manager dot load scene. And you can do that simple line from really anywhere in the engine. But maybe uh, you don't want to go to any point in your scene, or maybe you want to move inside your scene. So to do that, um, there are also examples for that. So if I go into demos, minimal, and minimal rooms, I'm going to not say this. Here's a, another um, demo example. If I press play, you'll see what it does. So I start in a room, and if I uh, press the A button here, it takes me to another room. And that other room is inside the same scene. So I was in this room, I went here. So you can easily create a large level inside one single scene where you move from room to room or section to section. The advantage of that, of course, is that you don't have any loading screen. Once the scene is loaded, you can move anywhere in it without any uh, delay. The downside, of course, of that is that you create a much bigger scene, which take, uh, which will take much more time to load initially. So it's really um, up to you whether or not you want to go that way or the other. Um, if I press play again, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to go through that door again. And here I have two doors. Okay, so the one on the left is going to take me to level uh, minimal rooms two, I think it's called and at the top of that level. And this one is going to take me at the bottom of that level. Uh, this helps when you want to create something like a Castlevania game, where you have a lot of uh, interconnected levels. So as you can see, I, I went through the door. I'm now at the top of this level. And I went through the leftmost do door. And if I go through that other gate, I'm going to go back to minimal rooms one. But then I'm on the other gate. OK, and if I go back here, I'm going to be at the bottom of the level. Yay, here I am. All right. Um, the way this works is by using something I call uh, points of entry. Points of entry, uh, they use a go to level entry point script, which is basically um, the same thing as the finish level script, but with the added um, subtleness of 
the go to next level method. Uh, as you can see, this go to level entry point extends finish level. So it's really just a finish level with some added stuff. As you can see here, I override the go to next level method. And the only thing it does is it uh, stores the points of entry into the game manager. And a point of entry is defined like that. So I have an index, we're gonna see how it works. And um, uh, facing direction. So I want to uh, go through that door, get out at index one in the other level defined here, and I want to be facing left. So um, how are these defined in the other level? Uh, let's have a look at that. If I go into minimal, minimal rooms two, so that's my destination level. Um, and here I have a bunch of transforms, so level start top, level start bottom. It's In this case, these are checkpoints, but they could be really anything, just empty objects or doors or you know anything as long as it's a transform. And uh, somewhere here, I have my level manager. And in the level manager here, you can see that I have a list of points of entry. In this case, I have two, uh, the level start top and level start bottom, and they are bound like that. Uh, usually you would just drag them uh, into these fields. Maybe I could add a third one and it would be, let's say the camera, which would be a very stupid idea. So um, yeah, here in my destination level, I say I have two points of entry for this scene. Uh, this is index zero, not one, zero. And this is uh, index one, you can you can see the numbers here. Just be careful. Indexes start at zero. That's uh, that's a thing. So if you want to go to the first um, point of entry in this scene, you'll say index zero, not index one. Um, sounds uh, obvious, but I, I've had a bunch of questions about that already. So worth mentioning. Um, so if uh, if we want to go back to the other scene, we remember that this one uh, this point of entry here will be index zero. This one at the bottom will be index one. So if I go back to my previous scene, you can see here that my uh, left gate points to index zero and my right gate points to index one. So by going through that door, um, I'm gonna go to the bottom and this one is gonna take me to the top. Of course, I could have tons of different points of entry. I could have uh, different scenes also because I can simply change the name here. So really the potential is limitless and should allow you to create this huge castle uh, that you dream of. In this level we've also seen how to move um, inside the scene. So this is done using uh, another script which is called teleporter. Uh, again this extends button activation so you, can, you will see a lot of common parts here. And the way this one works is it takes a destination uh, and the t destination has to be a teleporter too. So in this case, I have two teleporters, um, which is this one, green gate and uh, blue gate top here. And so if I want to go from the blue gate to the green gate, I just click on the green gate, put it in the destination. And I can also decide whether it affects only the player, if there's an, an effect to be played when you enter or exit the teleporter. Um, and I can decide how the, the camera behaves. So in this case, I've uh, asked it to uh, teleport the camera. So I don't want to transition from here to uh, the green place, the green door, sorry. And um, it's supposed to fade to black. So if I press up, you can see it fades quickly to black and teleports the camera. Uh, I could decide that the fade is much longer, for example, as you can see, much longer fade. I can also decide to not fade to black and to teleport the camera, for example. And in this case, it, yeah, of course I'm doing it on the blue gate. So yeah, if I do it, as you can see, the camera teleports, no fade anymore. Which is another cool way of going from one place to the other in your levels. All right, uh, something else I wanted to show you today is how to create a level selection map. Uh, fortunately, the engine comes with a bunch of examples of that. Let's go to the level selection demos folder. And in here, you can find the level selection map demo. It's one that has been in the engine for a while. It goes like this. So uh, if I press play, I can move my character around. Looks a lot like all the old Mario maps. And once I'm happy with uh, my selection, I press jump and 
start the level. Um, this map is nothing really uh, too complex. It's got a bunch of a bunch of points, and it would be nice if it wasn't doing this bug. All right, um, bunch of points that are linked. Um, a sort of simple character controller to make it move around. When you press play, it simply loads, uh, calls the level selector class that is here, and which in turn simply does um, loading scene manager dot load scene, which is the method we've seen before. So it's quite simple, it's nice, uh, and I encourage you to use it if you want, but it wasn't really scalable. And this is not scalable because now I have something like 30 demos in the engine and I needed something more akin to this. So this is uh, built using my new MM interface package uh, that I included recently in v4.4 of the Kong engine for free. Um, wanted to sell it separately initially, but uh, got bored and, and put it for free. Uh, so yeah, you can use it using the keyboard, you can use it uh, using the gamepad, the mouse, the touch, uh, whatever. And it's got a list of all the uh, levels in the engine. So for example, if I click play on that, it's gonna load the features platform scene. And there you go. Again, same principle, um, that button here is linked to the level selector class, go to level, and uh, on each uh, on each uh, of these things, yeah, on the button alt here, you'll see that there's a level selector uh, script with, with the name of, in this case, Retro Mountains, and that's as simple as that. Something that is also used in the um, another demo, which is called Retro Adventure, and it's here. So I'm gonna load the Retro Adventure level selection screen so it should look familiar, but as you can see, there's a bunch of other stuff like uh, slots over there and the stars. The Retro Adventure is something I introduced in version 4.4 of the Kogi engine, and it's a series of, level, uh, of levels that you can see here. So Retro Adventure one to five, along with character selection, um, game of a screen, and the level selection screen. So it's more of uh, an example of how you can build an entire game uh, using all the scenes and the demos in the engine. So if I press play, you'll see that, uh, yeah, it, it, I've already uh, started a game here, so uh, I've unlocked level one and level two, and um, I'm gonna go play level two and try to unlock level three. Um, so it's quite quite simple. I have my my Kogi character, and as you can see here uh, above me, there's a star. So if I go and grab the star, I've collected it. You can also see that in the top left corner, I have um, a life counter, and I'm already uh, at four lives out of five, which means I've lost uh, I've lost a life at some point in my journey. I'm gonna collect this other star here and just exit the level. As you can see, I get a nice uh, level-ended screen, uh, level complete, and I can go to the next level, which would be, I guess, the, the, the third one. I can restart this level to try to, to get that um, missing star, and I'm gonna do just that, or I could go to the uh, level section. So, um, there used to be a star right above me, right here, but I've already collected it, so it's not there anymore. And the missing star is at the top over there, so I'm gonna go grab it. Here we go. And now I'm gonna finish the level. And now I have the three stars. So I can go back to level selection. And uh, as you can see, level two now I've got all the stars and level three is unlocked. And I can go play level three. And like that, progress um, all the way. I can also decide that I'm really bad at this game, lose a life, respawn, lose another life. As you can see, my, my counter at uh, the top decreases. I've only got one life left. Let's make the most of it. Uh, I'm really bad at this. And game over. I've lost all my lives. So that's, that's how it works. And um, yeah, it works like that thanks to the Progress Manager. The Progress Manager is a new class that um, you simply have to put in all of your scenes that fit into this same section of your game. 
uh, and it's quite simple. You just have to uh, define a, an array that will list all of your scenes. So in this case, I have five scenes and they are retried and show one, two, three, four, five. Uh, for each scene, you well, you usually will have to leave these uh, unchecked, and uh, but it's showing the current progress right now. Uh, so level uh, one is complete and unlocked. Uh, in Retro Adventure 2, uh, there's a maximum of three stars and it's going to save everything. But really, when you when you start uh, the thing, you usually uncheck everything, say there are max, uh, maximum three stars and you just set up everything like that. And what it's going to do is uh, every time you're going to finish a level, uh, you're going to... Um, save all that uh, information. It's going to update how many lives you've got left, how many, and the status for each of these scenes. So maybe it's uh, complete, it's unlocked, uh, you've got, uh, col you've collected this star and this star, stuff like that. It's going to do that uh, for that for you automatically. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, use the button at the bottom and say, for example, okay, uh, I want my game to start with a, a status like this. So I click on create save file and um, as you can see I'm in this weird state now where I have unlocked this and this and this for some reason because that's how I decided to set up the thing. The last thing I wanted to show you is the character selection screen so uh, to do that I'm gonna open this in here retro adventure character selection. It's quite simple uses the same interface uh, UI elements and as you can see, it will offer us the choice of playing as uh, the retro or classic Corgi, Super Hipster Bros, or this 3D guy here. So if I press play, I can, uh, well, I'm going to select this one. It then takes me to my level selection. I just reset the um, progression, that's why uh, everything is locked now. And I'm going to select this level. And as you can see, I'm now the 3D guy. So it doesn't really look too good in this level, but it's just to, to show you that it's possible, of course. I encourage you to create your own uh, characters that will look uh, much better in your levels. And yeah, yay. And I can go to the next level, and as you can see, my choice of character persists, and I'm still keeping my same ugly, not feeling in this context character. And yeah, that's as simple as that. Uh, the way it works, basically, just like the progress manager, it it uses um, the, the same the same methods and will uh, save your your progress for the save your choices sorry for the duration of your session that's that's pretty much all i had to show you today about uh, how to do stuff outside of scenes outside of levels really to link them all together and create an actual game i hope you learned something new today and i'll see you next time bye